Greetings and welcome back to another Idscape Games Presents, a Baldur's Gate 3 Let's Play. If you've made it uh, this far into our series, make sure to subscribe and let us know how much you like the content or tell us how terrible we're playing. Last time we attempted to take on this face spider lair, a truly death-defying feat, quite literally. We were able to take out the face spider queen and flee from the combat, now for a quick night's rest, and then back into the fray. But it looks like Gale wants to have a chat with us. Ah, good evening to you. I take it you're here to pick me up on that bedtime story you were promised. Well, that's interesting user graphics. All right, exactly so. Marvelous. It's a story full of answers long overdue. <laughs> it's the story of a man who fell in love with a goddess. Very well. I'll play along. Regale me, Gale. Thank you. Once upon a time, not quite that long ago, there lived a wizard in a tower. The wizard was what one might call a prodigy, who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it like a musician or a poet. Such was his skill that it earned him the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries, Mistra. Oh, if only it was a Zuth. What did Mistra's attention feel like? Love. Perhaps it was not quite love, but you see, the wizard was but a very young man. It was most certainly love to him. Mistra showed him the secrets beneath the veils. The gossamer veils first, draped across the weave. The delicate veils next draped across her body. Chosen one, she whispered. And she slipped them off completely. Are you telling me the wizard made love to a goddess? Yes. Until one day, all too soon, the whispers stopped. The goddess spurned the mortal. The veils were drawn once more. And the wizard was left behind, heartbroken. Poor wizard. Poor wizard. Hmm. Silly wizard, too. For he wouldn't take no for an answer. Like so many of the heartbroken, he did something infinitely foolish. One has to think big if one seeks to win back a goddess. So the wizard thought big. Define big. Here goes. Once upon a time, very long ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his story for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite, and his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic unleashed that day was phenomenal, rolling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. A fragment of it was caught and sealed away in a book. No ordinary book, mind you a tome of gateways that contained within it a bubble of astral plane. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time, locked away from Mistra herself. What if, the silly wizard thought, what if after all this time I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? What was the answer to his question? The answer was to try, and the outcome was to fail. Here, place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside, there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weed that pounces, its teeth, its claws. It's unstoppable as it digs through you and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. How are you still alive? Of all things, magic. This netherese taint, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. 
and it needs to be fed. As long as it absorbs weave, it remains stable to an extent. The moment it becomes unstable, however. Go on. It will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. I'm sorry. That's a horrible burden to bear. It is my truth. Finally revealed. It is this folly that led Mistra to abandon me completely. I can only hope that you won't abandon me as well. After all we've been through. Surely we can brave even this side by side. Oh, of course. I mean, it's Mistra, not Azuth. That is... A great relief. Oh. A great relief indeed. It is an honor to call you a friend. Many challenges lie ahead, but in this moment, I believe nothing to be insurmountable. What do you say? Should we call it a night? Or do you have questions for me? Gail, are you still in love with Mestra? I'll be honest with you. I don't know. She's my muse still. The embodiment of magic. Or the embodiment of love? Only if we ever meet again will I know. Well, what would permanently rid you of the orb? The orb was kept safe and inert in a pocket of astral plane, suspended in time. If I can somehow manage to expel it from my body while in the astral plane, it will be rendered inert again. Alternatively, I could learn to control its chaotic magic. That is, to succeed where I failed before. But without Mistress Favor, I don't see how that may come to pass. Of course, there could be different answers as well. Faerun brims with more magic than any one wizard could fathom, let alone comprehend. Who knows what outlandish solutions may yet present themselves. All right, let's call it a night. Good night, then. And thank you. Let's see if Miss Grumpy is up to anything. Speak. Nope, nothing new. Alright, back at the start it looks like, so should be a bit quicker. Step off here. The moment that I step on it. <laughs> oh, Warren Jesus. We'll just sit here a moment and ponder the web. <laughs> And then have it happen at the end about halfway through.
Or is this actually a separate space than before? at least. and some gold. Steel Forged Sword, 1d6 plus 1 piercing, which means it is a short sword. Oh, though the leather grit, le the grip's leather is old and crusty, it shows no sign of wear and not even a single scratch mars the slender blade. Cool. Well, so much for nine knee gaps. <laughs> Below is a transcript of an interview with the writer and director of A Pleasurable Deal, Mr. Kingsley Harp. Interviewer, what was the inspiration behind this, if I may be so bold, entirely lewd piece of drama? Harp, it's about exploring the taboo, seeing who we are as people. Really are. Yes, Robert makes a deal with a cambion, but who wouldn't, interviewer? Well, I'd like to think most people wouldn't. Harp then you don't know most people. Everyone wants something. Everybody needs something. Cambians can see it. In a way, they know us better than we know ourselves. Interviewer. But at the end of the play, Robert dies horribly. What does that say about what we, as you put, need? It? You forget, Robert dies because he broke away from Carlisle. He didn't stay true to the deal they made. So... You're encouraging people to make packs with Hell's offspring to give up as Robert did his soul? 
Harp, we only have one life. Why not make the most of it? Interviewer. So, what was your deal? Harp. I beg your pardon? Interviewer. In fact, this is your directorial debut, wasn't it? You couldn't even get published in the tabloid Baldur's Bash before this play came out. Did you honestly trade your soul for an erotic play? Harp. I. Alright, we're done here. <laughs> thought it was going to take us, but that works. Evidently they all really wanted to stay down here. take a look and see if I can figure out how to fix that. Back in a minute. Alright, got that fixed. So the way that works is you can connect and unconnect portraits just by grabbing and dropping so he would not follow. And now they're reconnected. Let's get our light back on. And see where we can go. We might very well be all done in here, except for those tiny little face fighters. Looks like those aren't going to get anywhere. this down there. Looks like we're going to have to wander over that way.
Secure. I mean, it probably could have dashed, but... Figured that they'd act. There we go. They'd actually start moving. suppose lies at the bottom control yourself well after you ouch get to give a cheek unlock the ancient tome book is locked tight with no visible keyhole, only an oval recess in the cover's mouth. You try to examine the book, but the longer you stare, the more those piercing amethyst eyes draw you in. You can sense something dark about this tome, something profane. A cursed book? How obvious. Whoever opens it deserves the fate that befalls them. <laughs> How about you just leave it where you found it and we saunter away? Let's put that amulet in there. The book's pull is irresistible. You feel changed, bettered for having opened it. Suddenly you are capable of anything. Felling mountains, darkening suns, conversing with the dead. Glyphs shift gently before your eyes. Words slip into your mind, onto your lips, forming words you don't understand. And something 
is trying to reply. It's saving throw. Turn to the next page. The symbols dart beneath your eyes, warping and twisting. Your head throbs, but you almost understand. Try again. The world around you is gone. You can only see those glyphs, only hear those voices. You feel claws moving in the shadows. They pull at you, dragging you closer. Oh, let's turn another page. We're gonna fail one of these and die. <laughs> oh, here it might be. The glyphs scream, searing your mind. You feel lost. Tossed in a sea of arcane power that you can neither control nor you comprehend. You struggle to cling oh, to goes. scraps of what you know. Powerful necromancy, you're sure. But it darts away, leaving only hell's screams. The book snaps closed. You've seen too much. What profane knowledge is now seared inside you, you should never have known. We, I guess. So let's look at our character sheets. Halfway to five. Nice. Looks like there's a path leading off that way. Mm. Oh, uh. And it just goes back to where we were at. Fast travel, we'll pop back to Sylvanas' Grove. So we still have the idol. And hostile goblins. And we should take over the remainder of the goblin camp while we're at it. Tell me, Lazo, when you say we might be purified at your crash, what does that mean exactly? The caretaker will fix the Zaths, the purifier, to our heads. Its magic will quell the parasite in an instant. Sell a whole bunch of stuff, and then we'll head back over to the goblin camp. Back in a sec. Alrighty, we scooted back over to the goblin village. We're gonna take a peek around at things.
so many things just to pick up. I feel like we were over here at one point in time, but it's been a hot minute. She belongs as the fighter. Just cleaning up some goblins. Couple more to go. Definitely need to get our hands on a bigger weapon. Extracts P out of that. Wrong way, wrong way. Come on, Lizelle. Maybe heading up northwards. What a day. I could really use some shy. Goblins are actually on our side still. Nope.
Knew that was coming. Cures yet, so that's good.
Bonus action must be only on a kill. Any more heal pots? I don't believe. Nope. Take you. <laughs> That's not good.
That is not the way that's supposed to work. All right, let's get a short rest in. And after that, uh, we'll go ahead and pause here, pick up next time. So, uh, again, if you're finding this series to your liking, make sure to subscribe for further D&D content. We run two 5th edition games, one live through Twitch, generally on Wednesdays, and one that is uh, in-person recorded for your viewing pleasure. Check out links in the description for possible giveaways we're holding. Join us on YouTube, Twitch, Rumble, and a variety of social media platforms. Wherever you find Edscape games, you'll find quality D&D content. Talk to you next time.